hotel forever meets no end. Here we go. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. One way, Jesus, you're the only one that I could live for. side for you we're living all for you you are the way the truth and the life we live by faith and not by sight for you we're living My name is Jason McLeod and I am so excited that you guys are here. We are starting a new series at MCC Kids called Unstuck. Have you ever been stuck before? I went on a trip on a river just south of America on the border with Mexico and I jumped out of a boat into the river into a mud and my feet got stuck so far into the mud that people had to literally yank me out and it sucked my shoes out. I never found my shoes again. Have you guys ever found yourself stuck like that? Or maybe in the winter, have you guys ever done a popsicle or maybe even the summer and you've been licking the popsicle and it's stuck to your tongue and you just couldn't get it unstuck? That's happened to me too. But sometimes we just have to keep going even though it might be a little challenging and we have to have determination. But it's up to you. Determination means deciding whether or not it's worth it to you uh, to keep going and to not give up. So uh, there's a scripture I wanna talk to you. It's in Galatians 6, 9. And it says, let us not become tired of doing good. At the right time, we will gather a crop if we don't give up. So really the moral of the story is don't give up. Sometimes it's worth it to keep pushing ahead to accomplish what you want to have happen in the future. Does that mean like if we don't give up we're gonna have like a crop of corn in our hands? No, it means like if you're at home and you're doing your work and you only have a couple more weeks left of school and I know it's, you don't have the same teacher, your kid, your friends aren't there, you just gotta keep going even though it doesn't really feel right. What's gonna happen to you is you're gonna have a crop at the end of it. It means you're gonna be smarter, you're gonna get a grade versus a bad grade, your parents are gonna be excited and you're gonna feel good about accomplishing something in the end. So don't give up. We've got an amazing story, but before we go into that, let's all worship together, stand up, and let's sing a little bit about what we believe in.
The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the books of Matthew, Luke, and Acts. When Jesus returned to life, roller coasters hadn't been invented yet. But as far as his friends were concerned, they might as well have been living on one wild coaster ride. Peter and Matthew might have gone over the whole story one more time as they walked the dusty roads from Galilee back towards Jerusalem. Remember how it started? Jesus does all these miracles. Thousands of people gather to listen to him. And we hear God's voice saying, this is my son and I love him. But then he gets all those threats from the religious leaders. And he ignores them all and raises Lazarus to life. That lousy Judas betrays him. The religious leaders arrest him. And I run away like a fool. And Jesus is killed. But he comes back to life. And now we get to hang out with him. I think he's got big plans. Did you hear how he told me at the lake to take care of his followers? And what he said to us all on the mountain in Galilee. About making new disciples? Yeah. So you must go and make disciples of all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. Big job. How do you remember all this stuff? I record it. You should write a book sometime. I'm still not so sure about the Holy Spirit part. Same. But Jesus is here with us now. We can do anything while he stays with us. Forever! Ahead, Peter and Matthew and the other disciples could see Jerusalem in the distance, the temple rising above the other buildings. He said to meet him back in Jerusalem. For the Feast of Pentecost, probably. That would be the perfect time for him to do something big. If he wants followers in all nations, that must mean we take over Israel first, right? I don't know about the takeover part. As Jesus' friends returned to Jerusalem, Jesus led them to a hill outside the city near Bethany. Nice view of the city from here. I bet he's finally gonna give us all the big plan now. He already did. Make disciples of all nations. Yeah, but how? Is he gonna gather 50,000 people at Pentecost? Or maybe he'll take us all with him on an epic road trip. He probably wouldn't have brought us all up here if he didn't have something big to say. Sure enough, as they ate a meal on the side of the hill, Jesus told them, Do not leave Jerusalem. Wait for the gift my father promised. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There's the Holy Spirit thing again. Peter couldn't take it anymore. He had to ask. Lord, are you going to give the kingdom back to Israel now? Everyone stopped talking, then looked to Peter, then to Jesus, who shook his head. You should not be concerned about times or dates. The Father has set them by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. And you will even tell other people about me from one end of the earth to the other. The disciples exchanged glances. Okay, you did say the all nations part already, but wh where will you be? And please, can you explain how the Holy Spirit's going to help us? As Jesus smiled at his friends, he lifted his hands and spoke a blessing over them. He's not answering the question. As Jesus was speaking, something incredible happened. Slowly, he began to rise into the air. He's standing in the air. How is he standing in the air? Jesus' friends stared, mouths open. Soon, a cloud hid him from view, but they continued to gape. Men of Galilee. The disciples blinked finally looked down to discover two tall men dressed in white standing right beside them. Why do you stand here looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven, but he will come back in the same way you saw him go. Come back? Come back when? But the men in white were gone. He did say, don't be concerned about times or dates. But he just gave us the biggest job ever. Tell everyone in the whole world about him? There's gotta be a plan. 
The Holy Spirit. I think the Holy Spirit is the plan. But we don't know what the Holy Spirit is. Jesus said to wait in Jerusalem. So, wait. That's the plan? That's the plan for now. Jesus gave his followers what seemed to be an impossible job. Share the story of Jesus and his love for every nation across the entire world. But soon, he gave them everything they needed to not only start the job, but keep going. All right, hold up. Jesus gave his disciples a huge impossible task. Seriously, they didn't have cars, they didn't have trains, they didn't have airplanes. How are they going to take this message and share it with the entire world? I mean, all they had was donkeys, they had camels, they could walk and they could take a boat. But it didn't really matter to them. They stayed and they received the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is powerful. He can do anything through you if you're willing. And so they just simply had the Holy Spirit and then they went and did what God asked them. They had determination, they didn't give up, even though they, they really reached a lot of opposition. That means like people were fighting against them, trying to kill them, but they didn't, they didn't tell every single person in the world. But Jesus said, tell everybody in the world, right? But let me tell you this, right now, 2.3 billion people on the planet believe in Jesus. And it's all because those guys didn't stay silent. They went and did what God asked them to do. And then he did the rest. So when I was your age, I, I, it really bothered me. Like, how am I gonna tell everybody about Jesus? I mean, but it really starts with you. Are you spending time with God? And are you talking to your fam family out loud about God? So if you see something that's awesome or amazing, like this morning I saw the rain, I was like, praise God for the rain. People need to hear that. They need to hear about your relationship with God. You don't have to tell them a sermon or all kinds of information. Just live loud in front of people. If you see someone who needs to have prayer, pray for them out loud right then. Don't just say, I'm gonna pray for you. Do it right then. They would love that. And then they will come to you and ask you questions as God works on their heart and the Holy Spirit uh, it just moves over their lives, you will be there and available to help them. It's amazing and it's really easy. You really can change the world just like the disciples did. Think about all the billions of people right now that believe in Jesus, but not to mention the 2,000 years since they started spreading the message of Christ in the first place. You're gonna change lives and I want you guys to not feel stuck because you're not stuck at all. With God's help, you can do anything. So let's pray right now. Would you bow with me? Father God, we thank you so much for this story and, and the amazing um, determination of the disciples, Father God. God, they didn't stop even though they really didn't know how to do it, God. And, and that's the same with, with us. We don't know what to do, Father God. So help us just to listen to you and do whatever you ask and then just leave it to you. You'll do the rest for us. In Jesus' name, amen. It's been a great week, guys. I can't wait to see you guys next week.